Welcome to the Uncomplicating Weight Loss Podcast. My name is Eva Rodriguez, proud Latina, single mom, and certified integrative nutrition, health, weight loss, and mindfulness coach. I'm passionate about teaching women how to balance being busy and healthy without complicated rules or restrictions. On this podcast, I'll be simplifying weight loss concepts and mindset shifts so that you can be confident in your curves. It won't always be easy, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Before we dive into today's episode, I just wanted to remind you of the free weight loss resources that I have on my website, www.eva.fit. Be sure to take a minute, head on over there and grab my free EFT for weight loss video or take my weight loss quiz to help you figure out what next steps you need to take to kickstart your journey. This puts you on my email list and I'm always sending my email list exclusive goodies like meal plans, promo codes, tips, and hacks. Lots of good stuff, lots of motivation. So head on over to www.eva.fit. So I got the idea for this episode from something that I'm currently actively dealing with. And something you may or may not know about me, depending on how long you've been listening, is that I'm very careful with not oversharing in public spaces because I do tend to be an oversharer. I try very hard to show up as grounded as I can be because of the type of work that I do. As a coach, I need to hold space for my clients. I need to be neutral. And that means that I can't show up a hot mess, even if I am on the inside. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to effectively coach you. I often come back to the quote from Glennon Doyle's book. I believe the quote is, make sure you're sharing from your scars, not your open wounds, because it can be messy and it can be uncomfortable in the moment when your wounds are raw and fresh, right? And that's just not something that I see as valuable or even appropriate for what I do as a professional coach. So I want to be very transparent here in that I am recording this episode from a very open wound space. So I'm going to refrain from going into too many details until I can speak about it from the scar. So if it sounds like I'm being vague, it's for a reason. But what I'm dealing with right now has parallels to what I'm seeing and hearing from my audience, especially now that we're in February and the new year, new you shenanigans have died down. This episode is about what to do when things stop working. Whether it's your diet, your eating protocol, your exercise program, your coaching relationship, or really any relationship. In my case, a lot of things in my life changed very abruptly a few weeks ago. I started the new year literally in the clouds. I was actually at a rooftop party at the Four Seasons with my new man that seemed perfect at the time. Perhaps that was the first clue because. Obviously, nobody is perfect, but I guess I'm just a hopeless romantic or maybe just a foolish one. And I was so excited about the new year and all the things that I planned on doing. And two weeks later, pretty much everything imploded in my life. And it was very unexpected and I wasn't ready. Opening my heart up to people in general is really hard for me. So when I do and they hurt me, it really, really affects me because. I'm highly sensitive because I'm very emotional and because of my PTSD. At the same exact time, my work situation changed. I lost a significant amount of money with an investment. I was wrapping up my group program launch and all of it happened in one weekend. It was like someone pulled the rug out from under me and I landed on my face and it hurt like hell. And I'd been working with my therapist for a year. At this point, I sought therapy because I got really depressed at the end of 2020 and I knew that I needed help. I had struggled with depression off and on my whole life. So at that time, I knew I needed some professional help. And a few months ago, I started working with a life coach in addition to my therapy. And I'm also training to become a life coach. So I've had a lot of practice with self awareness and mind management. And I found myself in a very familiar place, except this time, it was like I was watching myself from up above. And that might sound weird, but that's the only way I can really explain it. Or maybe like I was watching myself on TV, if that makes more sense. 
And I saw myself standing on this metaphorical edge and looking down into the depression spiral that I was in most of last year. And that was a really difficult time for me. I talk about it in one of my launch episodes because I actually postponed launching this podcast several times because of how depressed I was the first two quarters of 2021. So I saw myself looking down into that spiral and thinking, if I don't do something drastic and different, I will end up right back where I was exactly a year ago. And that was a dark ass time. And I don't want to go back there because I have too much important shit that I need to do and it will not get done if I'm in this dark hole. But I could see myself looking down at this dark hole. I literally said out loud, I am standing on the edge of depression right now. And in the midst of this, I made the decision to stop seeing my therapist. And that may sound counterintuitive because while I'm standing on this edge, what I really need more than anything is help, support, guidance, right? But I realized that after one year of working with her, She was not the person that could help me. And I struggled with this decision because I know that she tried to help me. And I know that she cared about me. But she wasn't effective. When all this shit hit the fan a few weeks ago, I found myself feeling worse after our sessions. And I know that sometimes that's how it goes with therapy because you need to process things. But I wasn't getting any productiveness from it. I wasn't making progress. I was going backwards. And I thought long and hard about what to do because I was afraid that if I stopped therapy, I would fall off the edge even faster because I think I depended on it to be a buffer of sorts. But the more I thought about it, the more it started to remind me of an exercise bike. You pedal, but you don't go anywhere. At the end, you're sweaty and you're exhausted, but you didn't go anywhere. Well, now, not only did I feel that I wasn't going anywhere, I felt like I was pedaling backwards. And I did express that I felt like I was falling right back into my old patterns. And I honestly don't think she knew how to help me at that point. There are a few things that she said during our last session that made me realize we lost the plot. And that's when I made my decision. Therapy was no longer working for me and I needed to make a change. I'm not saying therapy doesn't work. This particular journey with this particular therapist was not working for me anymore. And something that I've learned from all of my training and the very intensive life coach training that I'm in right now reiterates this point that there are times when you can't help someone. I've had people ask me to coach them to help them lose weight, offering to pay my private rates, which are not cheap, and I have turned them away because I knew I couldn't help them. I had one client, fortunately just one, that just wouldn't do the work. She wouldn't show up to our sessions on time. She wouldn't do the work that I assigned to her. She wouldn't work out. She wouldn't stick to the eating plan. And I let her go. I could have easily kept her on auto pay, but I didn't. Because that's just not how I operate. That's why now, on my coaching applications, I ask, how coachable are you? How willing are you to make this investment? Not only your money, but your time and your effort. That's why when someone doesn't show up to our consultation call, I let it go. I don't chase people. Fortunately, I don't need to. When they blow off the consultation, as annoying and rude as it is, it just tells me what type of client they'll be. So if I can't help you because you're out of my scope of practice and knowledge, I'll be the first to tell you. If I can't help you because you aren't going to be coachable and do the work, I'll also let you know and I will let you go. In my heart, I think my former therapist knew that we weren't making progress because I said it in the last few sessions. I said, I feel myself going backwards. I explicitly said it. I feel like I'm back in that unhealthy pattern, and that is what I need to solve for. The solution here is not to find something to distract me. I don't need a vacation, a staycation, a nap, or a massage. The solution that I need is to break this cycle. 
And I don't think she knew how to help me anymore because what she offered was a vacation, a staycation, a nap or a massage. And that was the final straw for me. That is not what I need for my healing journey. And so I had to figure out how to help myself. And it was going to require doing things completely differently. It was going to require going back to the drawing board and trying new things. And I'm not saying I don't believe in therapy. I still highly recommend it to anyone who thinks that they need help with their mental health. Just know that just like any other program, sometimes it's just not the right person or not the right solution for you. And sometimes you don't know until you try. Sometimes it works for a while and then it stops working. Just like our weight loss can plateau after a while. And that's why I always suggest during a plateau, it's the exact steps that I'm about to share. Reassess and change things up. That's what I had to do for myself. I've been taking my time, researching to see if I can find someone with more specialized experience. And I'm open to trying a different type of therapy. And I'm also leaning more on my own skill set that I've been trained and certified in, like meditation and EFT and mirror work affirmations. I changed my workout routine and started working out in the morning instead of in the evenings. I've been doing a lot of intensive thought work with my life coach. All of these things are bringing me new energy and relief. But what if I would have just thrown my hands up and said, fuck it? fuck it. No one can help me. Nothing I try ever works. And it's sometimes easier to go down that road than to take self-responsibility and take back control over your situation, isn't it? So what do you do when something stops working for you? Did you start a new diet or a new fitness program on January 1st? Is it working? Are you getting closer to your goal? If the answer is no, well, what are you doing about it? Are you half-assing it? One foot in, one foot out? Are you holding on to hope? Did you just give up all the way and go back to whatever you were doing before? What do you do when things aren't working the way you expected them to? I'm going to share my process, especially since it's exactly how I came to the conclusion that I wasn't reaching my own mental health goals. Number one, take an honest assessment of where you started where you are right now, and where you want to be. Ask yourself, how's it going? And be honest with what's working and what isn't. For me, this looked like going back and reading my old journal entries, which is something I'd never done before. But it was so eye-opening for me because I was able to see flags that I'd ignored along the way. And I was able to see when I started to fall back into those old patterns. And I had to decide if it was worth continuing to invest my time, my money, and my energy into this if I wasn't getting the results after this set amount of time. This is the equivalent to looking at your data points that I talk about when it comes to losing weight and why it's important to track everything you're doing. You can't always go based on how you feel or how you think you look in the mirror on any given day. Your data points will tell the story. Your food journal, your weigh-ins, your weekly measurements, your water intake, how many days you're exercising. That tells the whole story. And then this will help you figure out how to adjust your strategy, how to shift gears because you're able to come from a calm place with actual data points. Adjusting your strategy doesn't mean giving up or quitting your goal. It means coming from a place of curiosity and coming up with different ideas on how to get going again, how to get yourself back on track. Even if you think you don't know, pretend like you do. Ask yourself, what if I did know? And this is a bit of a brain hack because it forces your brain to look for solutions. If you tell yourself, I don't know, your brain has no reason to try to figure it out. Our brains like to be efficient. So it's important to remember that when you find yourself saying, I don't know, you want to challenge yourself to reframe that and say, what if I did know? What would I do if I did know what my next step should be? You can also ask yourself, how can I make this simple? What small steps can I take today to get back on track? What can I do to make this work for me? 
And then when you're brainstorming your new potential strategies, make sure they are sustainable for the long term. Oftentimes we put conditions on ourselves, especially when it comes to weight loss. Like, I'll just do this until I lose the first 10 pounds and then I'll figure it out. No, that's how you end up on weird deprivation and starvation diets and detoxes and supplements that don't work for the long term. And that can really damage things on the inside of your body as well, like your metabolism. The reason is whenever you stop doing that thing and go back to doing whatever it was you were doing before, even if you think you'll do it differently once you lose weight, you probably won't. That's why people gain all the way back after being on a diet and then some, because now your body is dysregulated and confused. Even if it will take longer to reach your goal. I want you to think about the long-term effects and the difference between losing weight fast and gaining it back and losing weight slowly and keeping it off. Losing weight permanently is about the little things that add up. It's about doing things even when you don't want to, challenging yourself, and highlighting what is working. When things aren't working, It's important that you look at the strategy, look at what you're doing and what you're not doing, and then making the necessary adjustments. Sometimes it's you, sometimes it's your strategy, but it's always in your control. So if your current situation, plan, program isn't working, don't give up. Simplify things until you can figure out the next best step for you. Make things more doable. Listen to my podcast and start taking the small steps again. Take my weight loss quiz because that'll give you a better idea on what may be hindering you and how to break out of the rut. Ask for help if you need it. But most importantly, if you feel like you've fallen on your face, just like I felt a few weeks ago, I want you to get yourself back up, wipe those tears, Look yourself in the mirror and say to yourself what I said to myself. You're going to figure it out, love, because you can and because you always do. And repeat it until you believe it. That's what I did. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thanks so much for tuning in this week and trusting that none of this has to be complicated. At the end of the day, I want you to feel empowered to know that you can have the health, the body, and the life that you desire. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode and tag me on Instagram while listening at It's Eva Rodriguez so that I can support you along your journey. I'll talk to you next week. Bye.